I got a question in my email about can a person be a Catholic and be saved or can a person who has truly been saved claim to be a Catholic? The quick answer is yes. However, an answer that quick really doesn't help anybody. So I want to give you three big reasons why I believe there are born-again Christians sitting in Catholic churches today just as saved as me and you. The first reason is Christians can be deceived. In 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, Paul says to Christians, let no man deceive you by any means. Now, why would Paul say that if we couldn't be deceived? In Ephesians 4, 14, Paul says to Christians that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. So Paul shows us there Christians can be caught, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine, which you, you see a lot of today. One day somebody is a Bible believer, the next day they're a Calvinist, the next day they're a millennial, the next day they don't believe anything about the Bible. 1 John 3, 7 says, John says, Little children, let no man deceive you. And then Galatians, what's Galatians all about? The Galatians were deceived by people. In Galatians 3, 1, Paul says, O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth? Somebody bewitched them. They, de they were deceived. Before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth crucified among you. This only would I learn of you, received ye the Spirit by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith, are you so foolish? Having begun in the Spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? Having begun in the Spirit, they're saved. Are they now made perfect by the flesh, by living right? It's not a secret how the Catholic Church openly adds works to the gospel. They definitely have a false gospel and are easily the biggest cult in the world. However, when you read Galatians, you plainly see how Paul is talking to Christians who have been deceived by false teachers who add works to the gospel. They are either teaching you do good works to get saved, or they're teaching doing good works to stay saved. That's what the Catholic Church does. They add works to the simple gospel. And Christians can be deceived by that. They're deceived by that all the time. They're always trying to add works to the gospel. And the book of Galatians reveals to us that a Christian can truly be saved and then carried astray by false teachers. They get bewitched, as Paul said. And that's this is why it's so important for the pastor, the shepherd, to teach the sheep the real doctrine of the Bible. And this is one of the ways he protects them from the wolves. You know about the wolves in sheep, sheep's clothing, as they say. And in Acts 20, 27 through 29... He said, For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. You know, the pastors aren't given all the counsel of God. They're not teaching the people all the stuff they need to be taught so they aren't saved from the false doctrine of the wolves. He says, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. So the shepherds should warn the flock about all the false religious cults and show them the true doctrine of the Bible. A Christian can easily be deceived and go to a Catholic church and think that all the cults and denominations are one big happy family because they just don't know sound doctrine. It's their fault and it's also the many times the preacher's fault for not telling people the only thing required for a man to be saved is for him to believe on the lord jesus christ as his crucified buried and risen savior if he's done that then he's saved no matter what he does or where he goes after that if a man is relying on what the catholic church tells him to be saved then he would be one of those deceived people and he wouldn't be saved if he's relying on the false gospel that the Catholic Church teaches. He's going to be lost until he believes the true gospel. But a person could easily 
believe the true gospel, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and then get deceived after that, and then end up go to a Catholic church thinking he is right by doing that. But that's the first reason I believe a Christian could be a Catholic is because they're deceived. They're saved and yet deceived. Christians can be deceived. Now, number two, this goes kind of along with it, but heresies are a work of the flesh. That's the second reason why I believe a, a Christian could end up going to a Catholic church. Heresies are a work of the flesh. And if you're a Christian, you still have sinful flesh. In Galatians, Paul talks about if we walk in the Spirit, we won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Then he goes on to tell us the works of the flesh. He lists them, which obviously a Christian can still commit because our flesh is still corrupt. You got born again, but your flesh isn't born again. That's why you need a new body at the rapture, because this body didn't get saved. It didn't change. It's not going to change until the rapture when you get a new body. And that's why you still have struggle with sin. That's why you can still commit the works of the flesh. It's the inner man that's righteous, not this outward man. That's why Paul said, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? And he tells us in Galatians 5, 19 through 21, the works of the flesh. Now pay real close attention to these works of the flesh. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies. That's the one. Heresies. And he lists some more, but I'll stop with that one because that's the one we're talking about. Heresies is a work of the flesh. Notice that heresies are a work of the flesh. It is possible for a Christian to be led astray by false teachers and end up teaching a heresy himself. And I, I believe heresy isn't just a regular false teaching. You know, many people throw the word heresy around over every little thing. For example, if you believe in a pre-tribulation rapture, they'll say you're a heretic. If you believe in a post-tribulation rapture, they'll say you're a heretic. If you believe in the gap theory, they'll say you're a heretic. All these different things, they throw that word around. But heresy would goes further beyond just a false teaching. It's a false teaching that will put somebody in hell, which is what the Roman Catholic Church teaches. They add works to the gospel. That's a heresy. And a Christian who's walking in the flesh can end up teaching being deceived and teaching a heresy that's the second reason why i believe a christian can be in the catholic church is because heresies are a work of the flesh christians still have sinful flesh and now the third reason is because christians fear men specifically family and friends I believe there are also many men who go to a Catholic church that have heard the true gospel in the past. They received Jesus Christ as their Savior, yet today they go to a Catholic church and even claim to be a good Catholic. However, they secretly know what's wrong, and they just don't want to offend someone that's close to them. For example, a Christian guy who is weak in the faith and doctrine might meet a Catholic woman and want to marry her because of her personality and her good looks. And he just isn't thinking about spiritual things. He ends up going to her Catholic church to please her. He knows they have false doctrine. He knows it's a lot of foolishness going on, yet he does it anyway. Also, there could easily be a Catholic who was raised Catholic. And someone shows them the true gospel from the Bible. They even get saved Yet they fear their parents, their family, their wife, their husband, and they don't tell anyone or even try to grow in the Lord because they fear men, they fear what their family is going to think, so they just stay in the Catholic Church. And in John twelve forty two through 43, it says, Nevertheless, among the chief rulers also many believed on him, that is Jesus, but because of the, Pharisee, but because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him lest they should be put out of the synagogue, for they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. There's people that who believe on Jesus Christ, truly believe, but they fear men, and they don't tell anybody. 
Proverbs 29, 25, The fear of man bringeth a snare, but whoso putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. Practically, if you go to Revelation, we can get something for us out of Revelation 18. This is doctrinally for the tribulation. So it's not doctrinally for us, but we can get practical application out of any part of the Bible. As you probably know, Revelation 17 and 18 refer to Mystery Babylon the Great. And people have different views on who they believe Mystery Babylon is. But with that aside, we're not talking about who we believe it is. No matter who Mystery Babylon really is, the Lord still tells the people to come out of it. In Revelation 18, 4 through 5, it says, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues, for her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. So my advice to anyone that's a Christian who is a part of the Catholic Church is for them to come out of it, get into a Bible-believing church. This way you can grow and be established in the right doctrine. And if you're a Catholic and you believed the Catholic beliefs and you've trusted in their false gospel to save you, you're trusted in what they're doing to save you, you can be saved today by the true gospel that Paul tells us about in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, where he said, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. So the simple gospel is that Jesus Christ died, he shed his blood, he died for your sins, he was buried and resurrected. And if you'll put your trust in that today, you can be saved and have eternal life. The Bible says in Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And you want to do that before it's too late. You don't want to die and go to hell. You don't want to die and go to hell because you fear men, because you fear what your family's going to think. And if you're already saved and you're a part of any cult, the Catholic Church, the Church of Christ, the Mormons, Jehovah's Witnesses, you need to come out of that stuff. Get with some Bible believers. You can learn the right doctrine and you can grow in the Lord.